Using shade cloth to grow tobacco was first discovered in Connecticut back in the early 1900s. And using the cloth drastically improved the quality of the leaf used in Cuban cigars. Rick Trepto this week shows us the work of a University of Georgia researcher who has adapted the technique for two of our vegetable crops. These tent-like structures of shade cloth for growing tomatoes is the continuation of research by Juan Carlos Diaz Perez started in 2007. He said it was driven by trying to prevent heat stress. We've seen a lot of that in peppers and in tomatoes with disorders such as blossom end rot that are caused by high temperatures and associated sometimes with uh, drought stress. All the plots have drip irrigation under the plastic to irrigate and add crop protection chemicals. The silver plastic won out over black as it reflects heat, not absorbs. The thickness of the shade cloth seems to be the key. First, we looked at the cloth keeping out 80% of the light. Overall, I don't see a lot of, uh, a lot of flowers and fruit. So we, it looks like the plants are investing too much energy into growing and not so much into producing fruit, which is what we want. But anyway, that's still one of the responses we were looking for. And what looked best? It's under 30% shading. Compared to unshaded conditions, you can see that the plants are a bit taller. We have a little bit more foliage, but we also see quite a bit of fruit. That is precisely the kind of combination we want to have. The yields achieved with 30% shading have been outstanding. Dr. Diaz Perez says the bell pepper and tomato numbers doubled the amount grown with no shade. With 80% shading, there is only about a 10% increase. We have also monitored insects and diseases. We have looked at soil conditions, how it affects uh, water uptake or water usage. We have looked at environmental variables such as temperature of the air and temperature of the soil. The researcher says there is less use of pesticides. Another big savings for the grower is a shaded plant spends less energy using water to stay cool and alive. The water can then be transferred to provide vigor and size. So we have really a potential for, for at least uh, being much more efficient and possibly even reducing the water needs of the crop. That's what our data suggests so far. And Dr. Diaz says these tents are not what would be used in commercial production. What a grower would need to do is to have a taller structure. The structure could be flat with some poles to hold it, and, and, and it would be tall enough to be able to have a tractor driving through it if necessary. That's where the research is now. The shade cloth needs to be tested under actual farm conditions. It would be suitable for farm markets and medium-sized vegetable growers trying to serve a niche market. That might also be profitable because you get a very high quality. So this can apply both for sustainable growers, organic, as well as conventional. You get a much better quality fruit in terms of uh, visual quality and also you, know, you have less problems with insects and diseases. That's what we have seen so far. Critics of the shading say the plants become too hot and there is not enough air circulation. Diaz Perez says that's not an issue, but he also needs some good figures on the cost of commercially using the method. I have the feeling that is not a problem, but that's something I still don't have in numbers. So we need to proceed to get some economic analysis of this technology to be sure it would be something that the growers can, can do. I'm Rick Trepto for the Georgia Farm Monitor.